Hi everyone, welcome to our channel Dentistry to the Point. If you are seeing this face for the very first time, this is Dr. Saloni Jain and we make videos related to dentistry on our channel. In this video, this is going to be a continuation or a part 2 for pemphigus. In the part 1 video, we have discussed in detail the pemphigus vulgaris. So please check that video. I'll give the link in the description box and also pop an eye button because that video, uh, the video here which we are going to make the second part where we are going to discuss the other variants of pemphigus. So they are already or almost same to that of the pemphigus vulgaris. So many things are going to be common. So please watch that video first and do watch this after that so that there is a clear understanding or more understanding of the topic. Okay, so as we have discussed in part 1 that pemphigus was divided into three parts. The first one being the pemphigus vulgaris. That is the most common one and it accounts for 70% of the cases. The second being the pemphigus fallacious and the third being the paraneoplastic pemphigus. Now, as a, a short note uh, can come on pemphigus vulgaris, so that would be fulfilled by the part 1 video. And if a whole long note comes on the topic pemphigus itself, so these are the additional informations wherein you can describe the pemphigus vulgaris and the other two forms also. So starting with pemphigus fallacious first. Now pemphigus fallacious in a way is similar to pemphigus vulgaris. The differences, the two distinctive points are firstly that in pemphigus fallacious there is little or no involvement of the mucous membrane okay now pemphigus vulgaris had equal involvement or even more involvement of the oral mucus over oral mucous membrane as compared to the skin one but had both but here there is cutaneous lesions are going to appear that is blisters or erosions on the skin are going to appear but uh, the oral manifestations or the involvement of the mucous membrane is very less and it is also a mild form of pemphigus as compared to the pemphigus vulgaris. Now this is a benign variety and the other things like your Nikolsky sign or the clinical features or the histopathological features or the etopathogenesis all remain the same. But here there are six categories or six subdivisions of pemphigus fallacious and in pemphigus vulgaris it was only of one type that is pemphigus vegetans. So the six varieties of pemphigus fallacious. So the first variant is pemphigus iridematosus. The second is pemphigus herpetiformis. The third is IgA or immunoglobin A pemphigus fallacious. The fourth is endemic uh, pemphigus follicus. The fifth one is drug induced pemphigus fallacious. And the sixth one being the paraneoplastic pemphigus follicus. So these are the six variants of pemphigus fallacious. The other two names for pemphigus are superficial pemphigus because of the superficial blistering or vesicles or bullars that are seen on the skin or the cutaneous surface. And the other name, that are, there are two names, one is superficial pemphigus and the other name is Fogo selvagum. Now this is also known as Brazilian wildfire because it's a mild endemic form of, it's a mild endemic form of pemphigus fallacious affecting the tropical areas like the Brazil where it involves mostly the children and the family groups there. But the course of the disease is same as that of pemphigus. The second variant that is the paraneoplastic pemphigus. Now as the name paraneoplastic itself means that is caused by or that results from an underlying malignancy or cancer within the body. Okay, So such type of pemphigus which is caused because of the presence of an underlying malignancy or cancer in the body is known as paraneoplastic pemphigus. Okay, That love ki body mein already koi malignancy present thi aur uski wajah se body retaliate kar rahe hai in the form of blisters, erosions, vesicles or bullas. So that type is known as paraneoplastic pemphigus. Now everything is again same, Nikolsky sign, etopathogenesis, everything. But the most common malignancy which is associated with paraneoplastic pemphigus is your non-Hodgkin's, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. There are several others like chronic lymphocytic leukemia or Castleman syndrome or bronchogenic squamous cell carcinoma and etc. There are many but the most common one is the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now okay a distinctive feature here is dyskeratosis. A, a histological distinctive feature as you can see in paraneoplastic pemphigus is the presence of dyskeratosis or the abnormal keratin in all the layers of the epidermis even in the suprabasal layers. Okay. So uh, this is about your paraneoplastic pemphigus. 
So apart from the three variants, namely the Pemphigus vulgaris, Polycious and Paraneoplastic, there is an another variant which is known as Familial Benign Pemphigus or Haley Haley's disease because it was described by Haley brothers in 1931. It is an autosomal dominant disorder and uh, a history of multiple remissions or relapses is a characteristic of this disease. The exact etiology or pathogenesis is not known but it is hypothesized that uh, it results from any defect in the calcium pump proteins. Okay. Now besides this, the defect in the calcium pump protein being the primary cause, other factors like heat or friction or any infections are also contributing factors are also believed to exacerbate the disease. Moving on to the clinical features, so it commonly manifests in your adolescence or young adult life and there is no specific predilection for gender that is males and females are equally affected. Also since it's a variant of pemphigus, so definitely it's going to manifest as small groups of vesicles or blisters or bullets on the healthy skin or the erythematous skin and uh, these are going to eventually rupture and leave an eroded or rusted surface behind. Also, the Nikolsky sign is going to be positive. What frequently is observed, what we have mentioned in the introduction itself, that the features like heat or sweating, these amplify the disease or increase the lesion. Okay, and the remissions are more commonly seen, the spontaneous remissions are more commonly seen in the winter season. Also, the most common areas which are affected, which are prone to friction, are your neck regions, your uh, underarm areas or your axilla, the flexure surface of your underarm areas or the axilla areas, your groin and the genitals. Also, the regional lymph nodes along the areas may be enlarged and tender and bacterial infections or even the candida infections are uh, believed to accentuate or exacerbate the disease. So, the oral manifestations or the oral lesions are almost same to that uh, which appear on the skin or same as that of the pemphigus vulgaris. A distinctive feature in the histological feature of this disease that here there are occasional intercellular bridges still present between the adjacent epithelial cells. Now still there are attachments as we have dread in pemphigus vulgaris ki waha par wo desmosomes weak hoke toot jata tha unke beech mein aur phir aisa. So either that is not that severe, Matlab still there exists, uh, you know, attachments between the edges and epithelial still cell, they adhere. So such type of appearance gives a characteristic name that is known as dilapidated brick wall appearance. Okay, so such, this is a characteristic line for this disease that is dilapidated brick wall. Dilapidated matlab tuti footy. As you see when there is a brick wall or you remove some bricks, nikal do, to kaisa hota hai, kahin kahin attached hai, kahin kahin chuta wa hai. So that appearance is seen as in histological appearance is seen in this disease. So this is all about the various types or the variants of pemphigus. Uh, the whole clinical picture is almost the same, just a slight or distinctive points appear in each type, but the whole of the pemphigus remains the same. Also in the further videos, we'll see the differences and talk about the pemphigoid. So stay tuned for that. Also, if you understood this video and you find this helpful, Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Also hit that small bell icon so that you are notified every time we upload a video. Thank you.